Good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining us. My name is Karina Jenkins, and I'm the Graduate Program Manager for the Shady Grove Professional Programs at UMBC Shady Grove's campus. I want to welcome you to the UMBC Community Leadership Open House. We wish to remind everyone that we will hold the special raffle for the Open House Scholarship Bonus at the conclusion of the PowerPoint presentation before the Q&A period. You must be present during the live drawing in order to be eligible to win. We hope that you enjoy the presentation and without further ado, I introduce you to Dr. Lauren Edwards. Hello everyone. Um, I uh, am, do not teach necessarily in the core classes for um, community leadership, but I've been a lot part of this program for a long time. Um, I was part of the, the um, team at UMBC that created the program. Um, and hired its first director, Sally Scott, and I remain um, deeply involved through being on the faculty advisory committee. Um, my home um, department is in, let me see if I can actually change slides, there we are, is in public policy. So um, I can answer um, a lot of questions about community leadership and a lot of questions about um, graduate school overall and applications, funding, all that kind of stuff. But for what I don't know, um, it is highly suggested uh, that you uh, email uh, Dr. Scott or Renee Eisenhuth. Um, so let's get started. Um, the Community Leadership Program was designed really as part of the strategic planning process at UMBC. Um, we had a deep um, concern. It remains that we're building connections with the city that our address is actually in, which is Baltimore. Um, we wanted uh, to provide an experiential learning format so that folks could <laughs> apply almost in career. Um, that was kind of the idea. Um, uh, what they were doing at work and um, learning um, the skills needed um, for um, uh, transformative social change. That has, that dream remains, but it has gone, um, we figured out a lot more people were interested in it than just Baltimoreans um, and folks in careers. So it's actually a wide, wider spectrum than we dreamed. Um, and even better than we dreamed, to be quite honest. Um, we've got a huge diversity of um, students that come in in terms of experience and where they are in life, um, and it's been real fun to watch um, what they end up doing when the program's over. So just today, for example, I was talking to um, a second year student of, with um, community leadership and she's the vice president, I think, of our graduate student association. She's a full time student, um, you know, busy in, in doing all the campus life stuff. Um, but then I also have um, two students right now in a class that I'm teaching um, on program evaluation. Um, that are in career and doing all the, the life things in career working for nonprofits. So um, it is a huge, a wide berth of um, who ends up doing community leadership. What I love is that um, students that, that end up doing the MPS and community leadership are those that know their why. They know why they want a master's of professional studies in community leadership, and they know what they want to get out of it. And um, those to me are the best of the best of graduate students. Um, so there's two options here. It's not just the MPS, you can also get a certificate. Um, the MPS is a 30 credit master's and the um, certificate is um, a 15 credit. Those classes overlap, um, and so you can choose, for example, if you're not sure if you want to do the full MPS, the full master's, you can choose to do the four course, and then some folks have decided to stay on for the full, um, for another 15 credits to get their full master's. Um, and so, as it says there, it can be applied um, with the master's of professional studies. 
So an MPS degree um, is, uh, it stands for Mas Masters of Professional Studies. Um, the community leadership program is kind of the newer kid on the block and, and a little different from uh, the types of courses, other types of programs in it, like entrepreneurial leadership, though there is some overlap there, um, data sciences. But these are degrees that are designed um, with the current um, like skills and experiences in mind needed for the current job market. So um, it is an applied degree, meaning that you will read some theory and academic articles, but I know the way Sally and um, Joby, who helps her out quite a bit, or well, doesn't help her as part of the program in a massive bit, um, and is the original dreamer of the program and still very involved. Um, they design classes that are sur uh, like surrounded by experience. They think deeply about the um, curriculum and how they approach it. Um, the idea is when you leave um, that you'll have a portfolio um, of things you've done um, that have helped nonprofits or helped your own position or um, uh, or uh, not just a nonprofit or a government agency so that if you're looking for another job you have a whole portfolio of um, assignments that are actually real world <clears throat> real life things that you've done <clears throat> sorry about that for an organization um, that uh, you can show as examples of your work. So the goal in all MPS degrees is um, to learn specialized skills, to get hands-on learning, and to leave with personal and career development. That is particularly, I mean, very much true of community leadership as well. So why get an um, MPS in community leadership? I think you should because I think it's a fabulous program. Um, it is Sally has taken um, what we put on paper when we were designing it and turned it into just a wonderful program. I am so impressed with her every, every time we sit down to tea or coffee or whatever we're up to. Um, she has a background that is so spe specifically designed for leading this program as an activist. Um, she's done a lot of grant writing in her background. She has a doctorate, of course, but she chose not to go into academia. Her last job, um, she moved away from Baltimore for a little bit, but she's deeply connected in Baltimore. Um, and when she she came back, she's very interested in building housing coalitions, um, like, uh, or, like coalitions of nonprofits and individuals um, trying to solve housing issues. And so I just, I think it's so key as to why this program is, has been successful and um, such a wonderful experience is because of Sally and all the experience she's bringing. Um, as the director. So in this, um, in community leadership, you, you hopefully get academic growth, of course, but also leadership skills and, and hands-on learning. So you often work in classes with a community partner. Sometimes, you know, those community partners are, you know, your own position. Um, so Kenneth, we talked ahead of time. Aileo, we did not, but um, Kenneth, if you wanted to apply a class project or uh, what they're asking you for to Head Start and the school that you're working in, um, that's not only acceptable, that's advisable in what they want you to do. Um, you can also work for community partners that you're less associated with, which is sometimes easier um, because you can kind of get a, get a different flavor of another organization and then you don't feel so close to the project. Um, and they also do a, just a phenomenal job of thinking about working in a community, but also working with communities. Um, 
Joby and Sally both are long-term activists and community leaders in their own right. Um, so, you know, Joby has worked hard in Baltimore for years and um, they, they know the city well. So that first picture, I meant to explain it before we moved on too far. Part of that, uh, what that picture is from is in your very first class, you start doing walking tours of different places in Baltimore and learning the history in, of Baltimore, um, not just talking about Baltimore from an ivory tower. Um, and I just, I just think it's so key um, because we like to do a lot of talking about Baltimore, but we don't really know Baltimore. Um, and Joby and Sally know Baltimore and can help you and help lead that. Um, and then uh, it's also to develop a community engaged project over time. We've kind of talked about that. Um, and th this is not just another class paper. This is an actual project um, that you work with your partner organization and it helps them and it helps you gain the skill. Um, so I think it's just a, a great um, model of both curriculum and how and um, masters can be truly applied um, and break out of the bounds of how we traditionally do education at the master's level. So here is another one of those walks where a community activist is um, talking to the class and some community members are there as well. So that is um, uh, CLDR 601, it's the Intro to Community Leadership. They are actually meeting tonight, which is why I'm here and Sally and Joby are not, um, because they're they're doing a city walk tonight. Um, and so they had to be in Baltimore. So here I am. That's why you get that's why you get Lauren. Um, so for the masters, it's a 18 credit math, uh, there's 18 credits of um, required courses. And then you have um, electives that you can take for the rest of the credits. So that's CLDR 601. Um, and then you take a research methodology class that's either with sociology or public policy. Um, I vote public policy because it's my department, but uh, sociology is great too. And then um, you take CLDR 602 and that's legal and ethical issues in community leadership. This class um, I actually have de ha helped design from the very beginning, and um, I am so glad it is not what I designed at all. Um, it's a lot about the legal and ethical issues of nonprofit management, fundraising, um, community-based research and evaluation. Like, there's a lot to this class, and um, Sally has co-taught it in the past with um, a woman who she's not going to be able to do it anymore, but she um, has done, uh, she's a lawyer, um, so she knows the legal side very well, who does um, uh, legal aid and not like a high powered lawyer, but someone who's a lawyer who gets their hands dirty. Um, Sociology 606 is uh, another core class. We also have our students take this class. Um, it's on social inequality and social policy. Um, it's a lot about race, um, ethnicity, and gender in that class. Um, and then you can take CLDR 603, which is the capstone project, and that's the project I've been talking about. Ideally, your um, work in these other courses would lead um, to your capstone project. Now there's pathways after this. That's the 12 credits I was talking about. You can do urban studies. A lot of those courses are between sociology and public policy. We have a very um, strong urban um, specialty in our master's and PhD program. So you learn from some phenomenal individuals um, in the urban. Uh, one is Pam Bennett. Um, she just wrote a book on um, minority parenting and how it looks different and how that leads to different outcomes um, than being a white parent. Um, so I I just love that she's my colleague, to be quite honest. Um, and we just added Lauren Henderson to the urban track. Um, she was in sociology, but she's joined us and we're, we're happy to have her. Um, you can also do nonprofit and social sector. Most of those classes are in sociology. 
And then the third one is social entrepreneurship and that most of those classes are with um, another MPS program in entrepreneurship. You can also um, design your own pathway. So say, Kenneth, you're really interested in community leadership of education. Um, you could work with Sally and, and, and look at the classes we have on education policy or you know, find, find a, a pathway that makes sense for your career goals. So this is our exciting new innovation um, that Joby and Sally came up with and um, we just keep um, claiming it as all of ours, but it's a one credit skills course, which um, you can like taking three of these would um, take the place of a class. So these five um, week one credit courses are taught by instructors across the UMBC campus. Um, and you can take up to six for your MPS. So it's it's truly hands-on. Like one of the classes is grant writing. Another one is mediation and how to do like, um, uh, it's, I forget what it's called, but it's like a just model of, um, oh, it's re, uh, restorative justice model of mediation. Um, so that, I mean, it's just such a cool way of doing classes. That's just a different approach than, you know, here's a semester, here's your three credit course. Um, instead, this is like a one credit course. You have five weeks to do it and it's skill-based. So you have two locations um, online as well. I think for some of them still it, it, for other departments, not for um, community leadership classes, the CLDR classes. Um, so most of the CLDR classes are at the Lions Brothers building in Baltimore. Because um, like I said, from the very beginning, we wanted these classes and we wanted this program to be centered in Baltimore. Um, so uh, your other classes though are held by other departments. So you see here our UMBC campus. There is, you know, Metro, um, or there's a UMBC shuttle bus that goes from downtown to UMBC if um, commuting is, is a problem for you. Um, and, uh, like, I have one student right now who um, does commute, uh, or that's a CLDR student, um, and she takes the shuttle and, um, you know, back and forth between the city because she does not have a car. So it is doable. Admission requirements is a bachelor's in any subject. Um, you're the desired, um, and be sure to read that as desired, um, minimum undergraduate GPA of 3.0 on a 4.0 scale. Um, then you also need a resume and a goal statement. Like why, why do you want a um, MPS in community leadership? Official transcripts from your undergraduate institutions, and I I believe that's we require all of them. So if you just because you if you went to a community college like I did and then finished your undergraduate at a, a four year institution, you would need to get both. Um, you you do need letters of references for um, domestic students. It is um, it's great to get you know. Uh, a faculty member, but more important for this program is someone who um, knows um, your work and your commitment to community. Um, that's far more important than past academic performance. Um, international applicants, I don't think any either international, but just in case you are, um, you should refer to the international mission page um, for special admission information um, because there's some additional requirements. Um, there is a $50 online application fee and there's a slide at the end uh, that'll help maybe help one of you. Ailey, I'm sorry um, you missed it. If you have any questions, be sure to email because I, I, I apologize if you missed anything. Um, tuition, which is the most important consideration, it seems like at times for grad school, um, our current tuition and fees is 850 per credit. 
and, or 13, uh, 1,352 per credit for non-Maryland resident. Um, residency requirements, I believe, um, Karina, you may know this better than me, but um, I believe it's uh, at least one year in your current, in the state of Maryland to get um, residency requirements. Is that right? Yeah, the, I okay. think that's right. Okay. Um, Need-based scholarship um, are available. Uh, we, uh, we have worked really hard. I should, I should not use the royal we. Sally has worked really hard at getting um, scholarships um, based on need for students and community leadership. So um, go uh, to the website for any details. And then um, any information you need about financial aid, the website is there as well. Um, I will tell you all of the information is somewhere on UMBC's website. It can be difficult to find it at times. So if you can't find it, I'm sure Renee or Sally will be super happy um, to help you find um, whatever you're looking for. And this is the last slide I was referring to. Um, before we get to Q&A, uh, if anyone has any questions, um, we have a live drawing of a, of a scholarship bonus. So um, you still must be here to win. Um, and there's uh, Stephanie Allen will be in direct communication with you tomorrow if you want. So who's our winner? All right, I have my participants here. And a UMBC mug. And my UMBC mug. <laughs> <laughs> Queen of coffee. Oh, Alia is not here right now. Oh, no. Because of bad Wi-Fi. You have to be present to win. Yeah. So, draw a second name. Uh, Jubair Hassan. I'm and sorry. what has he won? Um, she well, or they? Uh, you win a $200 uh, scholarship uh, that will cover, I believe, your matriculation fees if you um, apply, accept, and enroll in the spring 2023 semester for community leadership. Um, again, Stephanie Allen, who's our assistant director, will be in touch tomorrow or uh, the next day after that. Um, uh, with more information. So, um, let me see, did she tell me I have to say anything else? Nope, she'll be in touch. So congratulations and um, you'll get an email from Stephanie with additional information soon. So um, this is the portion, if y'all have any questions, I am, I'm very happy to do my best. Uh, so like uh, uh, after uh, winning this like two hundred dollar scholarship, uh, like um, if I get ad admitted, so uh, will will I also be able to apply for a special scholarship bonus? Uh, uh, like need based, uh, I would say like need based scholarship. That's correct. So yeah, you can find that information on um, the community leadership website. Oh, Sally okay, Hilson. Okay. It, I will okay. tell you, um, it is competitive and it is, um, it's not as much as we would like it to be. I'll put it that it doesn't get to go to as many people as we would like it to. Oh, okay, fine. Um, there is Sally's email and phone number as well as Renee's. So, yes. Um, I'm also happy to answer any questions. Um, if you would like to write me, um, I will do my best. I really am so glad y'all could attend tonight. Um, I appreciate your attention and I, I hope you really consider this program. As you can tell, even though I am not a faculty in it, um, I think highly of both its director and the direction it's taken. So it's a, it's a great um, new type of program that I think only can move up. So well, thank you everybody for joining us this evening. Uh, have a good night.